Well, hello everyone, and welcome to our first session of Home Bible Fellowship for 2022. It's uh, good to be with you, and I know it's been a while because of uh, the COVID regulations that we weren't able to meet together in homes and in small groups, but praise the Lord for how he's led us. And really, if you think about it, the way in which our Lord has led us over the past couple of years, even in the midst of difficulty and pain and struggle, uh, but yet we here we are, we're still together, uh, and uh, he's every every step of the way he's led us and so we praise him for that this evening uh as we gather back together as small groups really for the first time this new year it would be maybe good since we haven't met for a long time uh to share some roses and thorns as the dust is settling as we're able to meet back together again what has god been doing in your life um, how is your walk with jesus in this new year uh, what's he been doing in your family life? Uh, how has he been growing you uh, in your own uh, personal spiritual disciplines as you read the word and pray? And as has become our tradition here, as we open up, really, what are some roses and thorns? One of the, the chief purposes as we gather together as Christians is we encourage one another all the more as we see the day approaching. And so uh, take a moment now, pause the video, and just share what God's been doing in your life since we last met there at the end of 2021, and uh, really how God has led you in your walk with him and in your life during this time. Pause the video and discuss these things. Well, where we're going to be today um, is we are going to spend some time looking at 1 Peter. We've, we've started a new sermon series on Sunday mornings, and uh, we've actually started a whole new really focus of this year. Each year in our church, we have a theme verse and, uh, and not only are we looking at our theme verse, which is 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, we're going to be looking at that here in a bit, uh, but we're also going to be really talking about and thinking about the whole sermon series and the topic of us being uh, exiles uh, in the world. We're going to, looking at ourselves this year, our theme verse is 1 Peter 4, 10, we are gospel-motivated servants. Um, but before we get there in 1 Peter 4, we're first of all going to be looking uh, at 1 Peter chapter 1 and thinking about ourselves as these elect exiles. So what I want you to do as you begin here is um, I want you to, we're going to read the first chapter of 1 Peter all together, just the whole first chapter. It's only 25 verses. So uh, what we want to do first is to read the Bible together. So maybe you can take it in chunks with your group. Maybe one person read a couple of verses and the next person pick up. But uh, read the first chapter of First Peter together. Well, we've already spent a bit of time the past two weeks, really, on Sunday mornings, uh, beginning to look at really Peter's first uh, couple sentences here. The first five or six verses we begin looking at and in sermons on Sunday morning. So I'm not going to preach to you another sermon. But as we have just read together 1 Peter chapter 1, I want to remind us of some of the background of what was going on. Uh, the Apostle Peter, he writes this letter uh, in AD 60s or so, probably mid-60s. And what was going on is, is there were all of these Christians, these people um, who had known and followed Jesus. But life was very hard for them. Uh, they had enjoyed uh, their newfound faith in the Lord, where they had, were born again of a spirit, and they enjoyed life together. But very soon, persecution began to happen. Uh, people outside of them, even you read the book of Acts, and you can see how these Christians were mocked and ridiculed for their faith. Even the term Christian, you can read in the book of Acts, and that tells us they were called such uh, as a term to mock them, little Christs, they were called. And so that's really a derogatory term uh, where it was used to make fun of these people. Um, and that's who we are. We are the people of the world that are despised and rejected, just like our Lord was. But Peter writes this to these believers, and the persecution under Roman Emperor Nero had happened, and a little bit of history for you. Nero was a bit of a maniac. You can read a lot about him in Roman history. Um, and he's actually the one who started the great fire of Rome. And he tried to blame the Christians. He, he actually tried to pin it on the Christians. Um, but he would do horrible things. You can read Fox's Book of Martyrs under Nero's persecution. And you can read about some of the horrible atrocities that, that Christians uh, had experienced. 
Well, this persecution was really just starting and it was starting to ramp up. And so a lot of these Christians were being having to leave their families, leave their households. They were effectively like refugees. And so Peter opens up and he says those words to, to those who are elect exiles of the dispersion. They were dispersed because of their faith. They, they had to leave. They had to go scatter abroad. And they had to go to all these different places in Asia Minor, or as we would say, modern-day Turkey. There are all these different cities that they were scattered to. Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Those are different kind of towns or cities dotted around um, what we would say modern-day Turkey or Asia Minor. And uh, But Peter encourages them uh, that they are elect exiles. The first thing I want us to think about as we think about the persecution that they went through in the first century and how Peter encourages them that they are chosen exiles. If you remember from a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how that word means we are strangers or pilgrims, that this is not our home. We don't belong here. We're not from here. Um, maybe you can kind of relate to that. Maybe even some of you in your group, this isn't, you're not from Britain, you're maybe like me, and you don't really feel at home here. But So as a Christian, I want us to discuss in what ways in our lives, as we've come to know Jesus, can we somewhat, and even in just a tiny way, relate to these believers who didn't feel at home and, and they were these exiles, in what way does your faith in Jesus make you kind of not really feel at home here? Stop and maybe discuss what your experience of that has been. As we think about our lives and uh, maybe some of the ways in which we don't fit in here, some of the ways in which we are different or we should be different in the way we think, in the way that we live, in the way that we speak, um, uh, as we think about this, um, what comforts can we take? Peter addresses these elect exiles, and he, he talks to them about how God had chosen them and about how, how God had, had called them to himself. God had caused them to be born again. God gave them a, an inheritance. God gave them a living hope. Um, I, I want you to maybe, as you look at this passage, why don't you discuss, as you look at the first six verses, what are some of the most encouraging things about how even though you struggle, even though we don't feel at home here, what are some of the most encouraging things as you look at the first six verses here that God just encourages you um, about? What are some of the most amazing truths uh, that really just spur you on and, and keep you going? Discuss these things. We're going to shift gears a bit. We're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 4, and uh, we're going to read together or speak together uh, our theme verse for the year. We're going to do it three times, and it's in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. I want to encourage you to memorize it. You might not all have it memorized perfectly, but you can say it all together with me. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Let's say it out loud to one another. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. One more time. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. As we think about that, God's grace, uh, as we, if you think a few weeks ago, as we, we thought about that as ourselves, as, as gospel motivated servants, God has given us his grace in Jesus Christ. And, and it's his grace that we need, his unmerited favor, his undeserved, unmerited favor. It's the, the grace of God in Jesus Christ uh, by which we have anything and everything. God, in his grace and mercy, has richly blessed us with all things. And as God has blessed us, when we know his grace and his unmerited favor, that's when we also can serve one another. Um, it, it says here, it talks about this, this issue of stewardship. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards 
of God's very grace. Um, a steward is just simply one who is faithful to manage or to use or to take care of something that another person has entrusted into their care. And as we think about it, God's given us everything, hasn't he? Our jobs, our experiences, our backgrounds, the money in our bank account, the family that we have, the cars, the houses, and the time that we have. Every breath that we breathe is a gift from God. Every minute that we have is a gift from him. And it's not primarily for us, is it? It's to be used to his glory and his praise and his grace. And we're only stewards, aren't we? We're stewards of everything that God has given us. So what I want you to do is we think about God's grace and being stewards of all that God has given us. I want you to, to discuss this topic of stewardship. Do we often think of ourselves that really everything God has given us, he's, he's called us to be stewards of it? That it's not primarily for us. Maybe you're like me and you can relate to, do you know, sometimes I just sort of get on with life and don't think about the fact that God has given this to me for a reason, not just for me, but actually for his glory. So maybe discuss this topic of stewardship and do you think of yourselves often as being a steward of everything God has given? The last thing we want to look at uh, as we think about this topic of us being gospel-motivated servants is in, in our theme verse, uh, we know that as each has received a gift, we are commanded to use it to serve one another. Uh, we are commanded to use everything God's given us. Now, this is specifically referring to the charismatic gifts, the gifts uh, God has granted uh, gifts by his Holy Spirit to every single individual believer. All of us have different types of gifts, um, and and so in that, the Holy Spirit equips us, and he gifts us, and he gives us different talents and abilities, and, and really particular spiritual gifts, but they're not primarily for us. They're so that we can, just like Jesus did, take off the towel and wash the feet of others, to serve, to faithfully serve and give of ourselves to meet the needs of other people. So what I want you to do as, as you sort of finish off is, is let's take some time and think about the ways in which, what are some opportunities this week? Uh, some opportunities that, that God is providing that I might or you might or, or we might together uh, serve others. What do, you, what do you think God is challenging you or encouraging you this week of ways in which he is calling you as a faithful steward uh, to serve other people? as we go from here. After we finish discussing that, why don't you pray together and maybe sing a hymn of praise just together to thank God for all of his goodness to us in Jesus.